We'll call the January Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Sherry for the roll call. Okay. Christopher Gallica. Here. Ed Heil. Here. Lori Howell. Here. Jason Keough. Here. Ashley Pasquale. Robert Smith. Todd Taylor is excused. And Scott Welty. Here. Chad Adams. Here. And Council Member Michelle Lynn. Here. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Ashley. All right. Uh, well, we're jamming. We're to set. We're to part four of the agenda now. Call to the public. Uh, this is uh, anyone uh, that's joining the meeting uh, who'd like to uh, approach the board about something that's within our purview. Now would be the time to do it, unless it's uh, it's addressed later in the public hearing. And then uh, I would I would recommend to wait till then. I don't believe we have anyone rushing up to the to the podium. So uh, we'll close the uh, call to the public. Next section on the agenda are the minutes from the November 23rd, 2020 meeting. Any questions or comments on the agenda? If not, I'd propose a motion to approve them. I motion to approve the minutes from the November 23rd, 2020 meeting. That was second. Okay, we have a motion and a couple of seconds. Uh, any any further discussion on the um, uh, on the minutes? Seeing none, uh, I, we have to vote, huh? Uh, all in favor of approving the uh, uh, the minutes from the November uh, agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that takes us to section six. I'll turn it over to Mike for the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Youth basketball has been pushed out until later this spring. Spring break camp will be run March 15th through the 19th and will be held at Smoke Tree Elementary. In the aquatic section, lifeguard recertification class will be held on February 6th. The, both the sheriff and um, our Lake Havasu City Police Department will be practicing some dive trainings in the month of February. We'll also have a couple after school program swims. Uh, the pool will be closed on February 15th in honor of President's Day. And Kinder Swim will begin on February 22nd. We have a series of tribute concerts coming to the community center on February 6th. There will be the Piano Man tribute on February 13th, the Fleetwood Mac tribute, February 17th, the Eagles tribute, and on February 27th, will be the Mark Hahn Dinner Banquet. Triple Crown Baseball Tournaments will be running January 30th, 31st, February 13th through the 15th, and February 27th and 28th. DCU Triple SA Baseball Tournaments will be running the weekend of February 6th and 7th, and there is also a flag football tournament on February 6th. That concludes my staff report. That'll take any questions. Okay. Any questions or comments on the uh, staff report? Hearing none, that moves us right along to the public hearing section of the agenda. Um, agenda number 7.1 is a discussion on council retreat review. Back to you, Mr. Keene. Thank you. Uh, the city council annual retreat was held on Thursday, January 21st. Just going to kind of go over uh, the presentation that that the that I was able to give to the city council regarding uh, kind of our year in review, our goals for upcoming 2021, as well as uh, some of the challenges that we're having. Um, but to start uh, on a on a great note, Council Member Lynn will remain our council liaison. So thank you. 
I'm going to start here first. Uh, this is our team. This picture was taken in December of 2019, so I don't want to uh, throw out there that we all lumped together really close with uh, no, no safety precautions, so this was pre-COVID. But I do want to thank all these individuals. Uh, they are the ones that really are out and about making parks and recreation what it is. Um, so I, I really want to sh send a, a thank you to them without them. We don't get anything accomplished, so they're, they're the hard workers. The Parks and Recreation Department is really divided into four divisions. We have our Aquatics Division, which is responsible for exercise classes, lap swim, open swim, uh, open gym, and our birthday parties, as well as a few other classes in there. The Recreation Program, uh, responsible for after school programs, camps, community events as well as a few athletic events. Our park maintenance division maintains 17 parks, 20 athletic fields, a skate park, the aquatic and community center, two disc golf courses, site six, several miles of trails and paths, uh, all the flags around the city, a park coast program, uh, and landscaping all of the city uh, facilities. Our administration department is responsible for really keeping us all straight in, in all, everything we do there. Uh, from program registrations, registration for events, park field uh, and Ramada scheduling, uh, all our finances through our department, user agreements, the banner program, tree and bench programs, uh, the liquor license, uh, aquatic center front desk staff, parks and recreation advisory board, community center room rentals, record retention, and then again, just the general support for the other divisions. So our 2020 year in review, what would 2020 be without a slide referring to coronavirus? Uh, with that, obviously we had a lot of challenges and, and difficulties. Uh, right off the bat, uh, last spring with teen break, junior lifeguarding, summer swim team, fall fun fair, swim lessons, community dinner, closing of the aquatic center several times, closing of many of the amenities in the parks. Uh, really, it was a year of transition and, and really trying to figure out exactly what we were doing, going back and forth, uh, f doing a lot of research with the guidelines that were given, both from the Arizona Department of Health as well as the CDC, and, and just really researching and, and what can we do as a department. Through that, we were able to still accomplish a great deal. Uh, we just had to come up with some different ways to do that. A lot of that was done through virtual programming. Uh, really just to try to keep an interest out there, uh, give something for individuals to be able to watch that couldn't come to uh, the aquatic and community center while it was closed and or uh, a summer camp. So we had some activities for, the, for youth to do. We did a bunch of videos as well. Uh, so I'd like to thank uh, Steve Blake. Uh, he was the one that kind of put those videos together for us. And then uh, one of the, the nice things that came out of that and will continue uh, in the future is the online registration. We really had a big emphasis and push for everyone to register online and we will continue again to refine that. Um, just even a year ago sitting here, uh, when, if we would do a registration, the Relics and Rods Hall would be full, um, you know, a couple hundred people in line going out the door. It, um, a lot easier through online registration to make that that happen and, and not have people wait for hours uh, in line there at the community center to register for uh, programs. Following the again the Arizona Department of Health CDC guidelines and working with the school district we were able to run a small summer camp after school program and winter camp all with reduced capacities and enhanced safety precautions. Uh, we came up with several different park amenity sanitation protocols. Uh, again, at one point we did go around and, and have to simply close all the uh, uh, playgrounds as well as the ramadas, uh, and then we were able to reopen them with enhanced cleaning procedures. We were able to reopen the aquatic and community center again with uh, enhanced measures of, of not only cleaning but safety precautions throughout the center. And another um, blessing out of uh, out of this year has been that uh, we have had a lot more and will continue to have a lot more uh, baseball and softball tournaments. 
in the years past, we've fluctuated between two and three for a year. Right now, we're anywhere between 35 and 40 that are uh, looking to come and be scheduled throughout the year. So um, definitely an increase there. Uh, that is good to see those um, that taken off. A couple of the facility upgrades that we did, uh, we, re we reseeded Cypress Park of the upper field uh, and did an irrigation upgrade. We helped the Public Works Department convert London Bridge Beach to effluent water. So that's the water that's uh, produced from uh, out at the water treatment plant and needs to be disposed of so we can use it over our, at our parks. It is perfectly healthy water. It does not attach to any of the hose bibs or bathrooms or drinking fountains. Uh, we worked with the school district to uh, resurface the tennis courts at the high school. We also, at the time that vendor was here, we decided we would renovate the basketball courts at London Bridge Beach, and they resurfaced those courts, painted all the lines, as well as upgraded the, uh, the basket system. Uh, with new backboards, rims, and nets. Uh, through some residence requests, we were able to remove two of the horseshoe pits and install two brand new bocce ball courts up at Jack Hardy Park. Uh, so those courts are lit and, uh, and allow, uh, allow residents to play bocce up there at Jack Hardy as well as playing in the evening. Uh, with the help of our sign shop, we've been going throughout the, the park system and updating uh, the signs as there you can kind of see some of the signs are very worn out so we kind of just gave them a, a nice fresh feel. Um, we did not change any of the regulations uh, especially I, I know that was one of the concerns in the channel. Um, they're just really kind of they're spruced up versions of the signs that were were out there. As part of our community outreach, reach, we, uh, we produced some Arbor Day videos, Earth Day videos. Um, we also had a Girl Scout planning, planting of uh, some more milkweed out at the Butterfly Pavilion. And one thing that I believe Lake Havasu City should be very proud of is uh, we did receive for the 18th year uh, our Tree City USA. I think that's uh, pretty impressive for a uh, a city in the desert. So what do we have to look forward to as 2020 becomes 2021? Um, we have a few projects coming up. One of them is the completion of the pickleball courts, which we'll discuss a little bit uh, later as well uh, in our meeting. Uh, but those are scheduled to be completed by late spring. Uh, as this group has talked about, the, uh, the need for the Cypress Park additional light and we'll talk about that project here in a, a little while as well. And then the HVAC system uh, to the aquatic center, uh, some, some refurb there in addition uh, into the, the natatorium side. That project is uh, currently out for bid for um, design work. So the, those qualifications will be coming back uh, here in the next couple weeks and we'll be able to get the design for that going with construction next year. Our number one goal really is to, uh, I think everybody wants us to, to be able to get back to some regular program. Uh, you know, it, it's been a tough year, uh, both on our residents, uh, our, our visitors, as, as well as our staff. I think everybody is, is itching to, to get back. Um, obviously, we want to do it as safe as we can, and, and we'll wait and um, until we can and make the, the correct uh, safety precautions there. Um, some of the challenges we have, um, you know, we definitely have some staffing shortages uh, as well as then our part-time staff is definitely, it's a, we're in competition with a lot of businesses in town, um, whether, you know, it's, it's a Starbucks, it's when Habit shows up. Um, we're all working in that same pool uh, to recruit our after-school program leaders, our lifeguards, uh, our laborers out in the park. So um, just some competitiveness there. We definitely have some aging equipment and facilities. Uh, the Aquatic Center is working. It was built in 1994. So, um, you know, it, it's not a, not a new facility. 
any longer and, and definitely is in need of uh, some upgrades there. Um, the, that equipment and, and facilities also goes out to our parks, our irrigation system, our playgrounds. Um, you know, those are under constant repair and, and some needing to be replaced. A couple of the overarching themes of the day, uh, obviously the challenges that every department has gone through with COVID, and then certainly some budget concerns in the areas, again, of personnel, facilities, and equipment. Council did commit to further discussions during the budget process to a pathway forward to a sustainable budget. Um, and so those conversations will continue to, to how we address all of those uh, concerns that each of the departments had. So with that, that kind of concludes our presentation that uh, that, I, that I made to, to council that day. Um, with that, I'll take any questions. Okay, any questions from the board? Michelle, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Uh, from from city council, or, you know, from from your perspective, anything that the board ought to know about based on you know what what, what happened in the retreat? Um, no, Mike pretty much gave his presentation. We didn't get an opportunity to go over the CIP budget during the retreat, so we're going to be doing that within the next couple of weeks. So any like discussions that we've had here about recommendations at the council, we didn't have a chance to talk about it at the retreat. Okay, but I'll get back to you when we do have that meeting. All right, thank you. Uh, so before we move off of this one, um, I, I do want to say thank you, Michelle, and congratulations. We appreciate you being the liaison for our board. You, um, you know, I think you do a tremendous job of, of bringing information to us and sharing our points of view back with the with the city council. So, so thank you and congrats. Um, and and Mike, thank you for uh, you, and to to your whole staff. Um, you know, the, we we have a remarkable parks and rec offering for the community, and um, and that's something that everyone should be proud of. So thank you for that. Uh, this is a public hearing. Anyone from the public have questions or comments for, uh, for this agenda item? Again, don't see anyone rushing to the mic. So we'll move on to uh, section 7.2, which is discussion on pickleball court project update. And this will be an ongoing item on our agenda until the courts get completed. Uh, so just kind of a, an update here. The courts are on schedule. What was actually funny is I was in last week's uh, update meeting and to the date they are actually, and which is put together is just really a, a guesstimate, but on that day they were doing exactly what they had pinpointed that they would do. So they are on schedule. Um, the retaining walls are in place. They're backfilling around those. The fence posts uh, will be dug and inserted in the next couple weeks and we should have concrete poured by the hopefully the end of February um, is kind of their schedule. So um, by our next meeting, we, we should be able to say that uh, we can at least see the fence posts in the ground and, and hopefully some pouring of concrete. Uh, so again, we're on schedule with that and that really kind of completes that update. With that, I'll take any questions. Okay. Where are the courts gonna be? I'm sorry, what was that, Chad? Where are the courts gonna be? They're uh, up at Dixant Park. You know where that's at on the north side of town? No. Off of um, Avalon. Oh, okay. Okay, any other questions or comments from the board? All right, this is also part of the public hearing. Any questions or comments from the audience? Be sure you push the button so we can hear you. Is it on? I got a green button, okay. so I'm good. So I, I take it you guys didn't discuss the CIP budget then, so we didn't know if you're going to get any more money for concrete, or, because the association wants to put up shade structures, but there's no concrete to put the shade structures on, and, and I do know they still have money for lights, so uh, uh, it's kind of hard to get the lights now with the retaining walls there for the existing, but it still could be done with manual labor, but uh, I think that would be my one suggestion to do. Uh, and then I do know uh, London Bridge Beach, uh, I still see it's just dirt there at the basketball court. And 
pickleball courts. Hopefully they can put some hardscape of some sort there because the dirt's coming back onto the courts and then it's just like sandpaper taking the, the stuff off. So that's just one of my observations. And, but the association's looking forward to uh, throwing some money into that project again. So uh, uh, I'm no longer on the board, which is okay. But I'm still the ambassador and uh, thanks for the work, Mike. And hopefully, you know, they do want to finish that project up there because it is just going to be dirt, except for where the, the pads of the pickleball courts are going to be. So we'll be walking around in dirt getting it on and off and hopefully we'll get some sidewalks soon. And, uh, and hopefully they move forward. It has kind of been a little slow, but they, you know, they're lucky that you're, they're not doing the whole project with the parking lot because then they probably wouldn't have got done in the six months. So anyway, but that's all I got. Any questions for me? I believe from the board. Oh, I'm sorry, did I hear someone that on the call? Oh, I didn't hear you. Oh, maybe I, not. I'm not sure if that's just some, someone's conversation in the background or if there's right. someone trying to. It's Ashley. Oh, hi, Ashley. Oh. <laughs> hi. It's really muffled, Ashley. Yeah, barely. Can you turn your microphone up? I'm going to go with no since they didn't hear you. <laughs> uh, I can barely hear you. I don't know. Do you guys want me to? Uh... Yeah, Lori, if you could interpret, that would work because we can hear you perfectly. Okay. I'll give it one more try. Is this any better? Yes, oh, most definitely. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Goodness. I apologize. Do I remember my question now? Yes. Okay. I, I did have a question based on um, the comments just made about whether there's coordination happening. It seems like the Pickleball Association is still interested in contributing additional funds and, you know, um, additional amenities to this project. And without the coordination, the, the timing could prohibit or at least make harder some of those additions. So I guess, I don't know if my question is to um, Mr. Keene, probably if there's any coordination happening with that. Yes, there certainly is. I actually met with the association president uh, the Friday before last uh, and discussed several of those uh, opportunities for them to uh, add some funding to the project and, and some different amenities. Oh, that, that's great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Doug. Okay. We'll move on to 7.3 in the public hearing. This is discussion and possible action regarding Bureau of Land Management shoreline trail input. So, okay, I wanted to bring this to the, uh, to the board's attention. Um, the Bureau of Land Management is seeking some public input on a proposed shoreline trail that would uh, run 30 miles from Partners Point, which is really what we know as Contact Point, uh, as far as the safety center there, uh, down to Bill Williams National Wild Refuge. So it, it really doesn't necessarily right now, the way it is being proposed, have a whole lot to do with the actual city properties. Um, however, I, I did think it was a great opportunity to um, be able to, if the board would wish to maybe give a, a letter of support or a letter of non-support or, or kind of give our input as a, as a collection uh, of, of this advisory board to uh, the Bureau of Land Management on this particular project. So I thought it would be a, a good opportunity to hear what, uh, what the board members thought of it and, and if we wanted to do any sort of uh, motion here that, that we could, uh, again, support it or, or not. Okay, uh, can you refresh my memory on what happened to the trails subcommittee? Um, they really kind of, we, we, they kind of just, uh, we created the, we, so that they were a non-formal group. And then after that, uh, 
there, there really isn't a, a ton of projects right now based on that. So, um, so, that, so they've kind of just, are, are, I guess, sitting and waiting. Okay. I wondered if the, I wondered if that group was still convening and maybe had some, you know, uh, some some input yeah. uh, for this project. Not not currently. I'm sure individually okay. that they have they have reached out to the to the bureau as well. Yeah. Okay. So uh, personally, I'm a, I I love the idea. I'm excited about the you know the opportunity to be able to have some non motorized um, more non motorized trails to get around the lake, and I think that'll be an I can't wait to to travel it. You know. Um, so I, I, I'm all, like, like I said, personally, I, I'm, I'm all for, um, offering what kind of, whatever support we can at this point. And if it's just a, you know, a, a, an MOA saying that, you know, we're, we're happy to, you know, to help out where we can, um, then I say we do so, but I'll open it up to the board, uh, with, uh, questions or comments on the, on the subject. I too agree with it. Um, I know when the trails committee was meeting too, they were, they were talking about, like a horse area out at Sarah Park at one point, which might be a perfect tie-in to the trail that would go down there again for horseback riding and stuff like that, along with the non-motorized stuff. Um, and then if we could actually, yeah, connect our trails into our existing trails, shoreline trails and stuff like that, um, from the channel all the way through, all the way down, I think would be a great opportunity um, to get involved with and, and approve something like that. I. I'm all for it. I uh, um, I want to know what's taking so long. That would be my only comment. It seems like a shoreline trail spanning, yeah, all of Arizona's riverside and lakeside should should have been done before the town, in my my reckoning. Um, so anything we can do to support it in in word or with uh, the, you know, the town council's future support for projects, I think it's excellent. Any other comments from the board? I'm in support of the trails <laughs> completely. Thanks, Lori. Uh, okay, so I think before we move forward, this is part of a public hearing, so we'll uh, we'll address comments from. Um, those members in the audience? No takers on this one, huh? Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, okay, so y we need a motion on something here, or? Well, it could possibly, uh, if, if you wanted to. It, it sounds like you have general consensus that, that you're in support of it. So I, I think if you want, if we wanted to do a formal, uh, a formal letter of support, to the, to the bureau, then we would need a, a motion from uh, from the board to to write that up, and then we would have you as the chair sign that. Okay. Uh, so, anyone on the board willing to put the, a summary of that together as a motion? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Chris Gallagher. Uh, I move for the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee to prepare a letter of endorsement and uh, support for the uh, BLM uh, trail plan to go from uh, Bill Williams up to our city's trail point um, and that uh, they should include us in any continued planning so that we can see how we can assist them. All right, we have a motion. Mr. Chair? Yes. And I would like to second the motion of the approval of the Bureau of Land Management uh, Trailhead trail okay. from Shoreline Trail, excuse me. All right, we have a, a very well-worded motion and a second for it. So, um, and, and, and uh, will the board have a chance to review it before? It, okay, yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. All right, this is, this will be, this is gonna be a fun one. I'm excited about this. Okay, we'll go ahead and close out 7.3 and move on to a discussion on possible park amenity improvement hey, project. Update. Jason. Oh, yes, sir. We do need to go back and vote. Oh, oh, let's back it up to 7.3 and vote. Um, all in favor uh, of the formal letter, say aye. 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 Any, any aye. opposed? And with that, we'll move on to 7.4, which is the possible park amenity improvement.
Do we need to back up, Mr. Keenan? No, I think you're good. Okay. Okay. All right. Possible park amenity, Mr. Keenan? Okay, so again, we'll, uh, an item that we'll continue to, to see on our agenda uh, is the park amenity improvement project uh, that, that the board has been working on in the last uh, few meetings. Uh, and that project that was selected there would be the additional light uh, at the lower field on the Cypress Park ball field, or soccer field. And uh, that project is moving forward, uh, albeit a little little slow. I did uh, have conversations with our engineering department on that, uh, and we'll be working with them through through that process. Uh, luckily, th about this time last year, we did work with Musco, and they did all the design work and the plans. Uh, so those are finished, as well as um, we went through a, a small bid process or a, a, a verbal bid process for actually installation so we still have some quotes that we can go off of and contacts through that but we were working again through their engine with our engineering department on on finishing um, the, that package and, and getting that out I'm really hoping that that project is wrapped up and completed by the end of this fiscal year that completes my update there I will take any questions any questions or comments from the board takers this is also part of the public hearing any questions or comments from those uh, in the audience no takers there either all right so I think that wraps up uh, section 7 of the agenda we'll move on to section 8 future discussion items we'll open it up to the board for uh, um, anything you want to want to hear about in particular All right, uh, Michelle. Anything, anything you, you see that we ought to put on our plate? I think that the board has given um, Mike some direction on the things that that are possible for that CIP. So I'm I'm waiting to see what he's going to present to us on that day. If there's anything you think that should be addressed when we have that, it, it is open to the public. Correct. So that'll be open if you want to attend that. But I. Everything I think that you guys have talked about, he, he's gotten out of that. Okay, wonderful. So, and I think, uh, Mike, you said that, that CI, the CIP budget discussion will occur before our next meeting? I believe it, it, it will occur before the next meeting oh, okay. um, it, as far as in the budget process. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the date uh, off the top of my head. Okay. Okay, so may th maybe there's a chance that for February we'll be able to hear the uh, outcome of that meeting and, and um, I don't, I mean, based Certainly. on our discussions about CIP projects and, and, uh, and, and what we know about these, uh, you know, these plan B funded pro or funds that may help with the projects that you went over in the last um, agenda item, uh, maybe we can get, we'll be ready for an update. Um, so that might be, that might be enough meat on the, on the plate for a, for a February agenda. I, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Keen, I, I'd like to suggest, uh, I don't know if it were late to the game, but um, for the next agenda, if we can have some information about um, any any discussion or possibility of the Parks and Recreation Facilities Department, uh, Park or Community Center, Aquatic Center, being used to help facilitate the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccinations. It seems that uh, in a lot of other places, they're using sports facilities or, or similar facilities and our town is sticking with clinics so far. And I wonder if that's just been overlooked or if not, what, what the rationale was. Uh, I can answer that question without trying to go into a whole lot of detail as it wasn't an agenda okay. item. Um, the vaccination rollout is, is run through the county. Uh, and the city is in negotiations with the county on a, an agreement um, to 
to allow the county to facilitate that, that rollout utilizing city facilities. And, and we're, we're not exactly sure which one they will choose yet. Very good, thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I, um, I think part of our process is to get a second for any requests for future discussion items. And I just wanted to agree with your recommendation. And I also um, was hoping that we could have a discussion about teen break um, and what the parks and recreation support looks like for that. Okay, so I heard a second for my for my request for uh, CIP brief out, and then I heard a request that needs a second for uh, for Ashley's re uh, request about teen break and uh, resource allocation tied to it. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I'll second Ashley's request. All right. Okay. All um, right. Anything else from the board, Chad? You got anything? Yeah, I had a question. What is the park amenity improvement? That would be uh, what we've been talking about on the last couple of meetings as far as that additional light uh, on the soccer field uh, at Cyprus. So there, there's a little bit of um, some, al some allocation of uh, our budget, uh, approximately fifty to $60,000, dollars fifty to $75,000 uh, that was put in the budget um, for a project for the, the board to kind of consider. Uh, and that was the one that, uh, that kind of rose to the top as far as priority for this year. So is it is that the only um, project like for the lights? For that resource, yes. Uh, that did that answer the question for you, Chad? Uh, yeah, I just had. I know that one of the vending machines at the park is broken, so I just wondered if that had anything to do with it. Oh, okay. Uh, we can talk after, but if you let me know which one, uh, we, we lease uh, those are uh, a different company that comes in and does those, but we can get in contact with them and get them repaired. Okay. All right. Uh, so I think I think we have uh, some some uh, some good su subjects for upcoming meetings, and with that, we'll uh, go to section nine, which is future meetings. And I'll turn it over to Sherry. Okay. Our future meeting is February twenty second. Same place. All right. Okay, that brings us to uh, agenda item number 10. I would entertain a motion to adjourn if anyone care to. Since I'm on roll, Mr. Chair, <laughs> <laughs> a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. I haven't said anything second. to it. I'll second. <laughs> and, okay. a couple of seconds. Some... and with that, we're adjourned. Thank you all.